Amen. Well, everybody ready? Praise the Lord. I was, uh, well, Jim, why don't you tell us kind of who you are, what, what you're up to right now, where you live in, all that stuff, social security number, bank account information. <laughs> well, it's good to see everybody. Uh, first and foremost, uh, this is my wife, Erin, if you'd stand. And some of you that uh, I, I noticed there's just a few hands that it actually remembered ministry when I've been here before, but uh, this is her first time, so I'm glad she's here with me, and uh, a real vital part of our ministry time. Erin uh, has a, a wonderful anointing on her life, and so uh, I, I don't try to minister at all unless she's with me, so praise the Lord. Uh, so good things have happened, um, and a lot has happened since the last time we're here, but just to make it real simple, uh, the Lord sent us out to Colorado. That's where we're living now, in Castle Rock, Colorado, about oh, 25, 30 miles south of Denver, another 35 miles north of Colorado Springs, so kind of right in the middle. And he sent us out there to start a healing center. That's a little different. Um, I know, you know, when I've told some of my friends that, they said, oh, we're gonna, you're going to start a church. I said, well, no, actually, the Lord said to go out there and start a work. And you'll find in the Bible, a church is more central located. A work is more um, broad. It, it, it reaches out many regions. A, a work can reach to, well, really the world more so than a church maybe more reaching to a location. So um, we knew what we were supposed to do, and we started a healing center. Now it's just in its infancy. I mean, we probably, we're, we're at a holiday inn right now. We need to get into our own building. Uh, we had a really encouraging week, you know, when you end up having maybe three or four people there, you know, you're like, oh, Lord, are you sure you called me to do this, you know? And, uh, but the last uh, week we were there, it just kept increasing, and uh, there were, as far as the room was concerned, it looked like the whole room was filled. I know there were only 38 people, but still that was wonderful to see, people excited and coming, and uh, it seems like every, every time now we're doing this, uh, more people are hearing about it and uh, more are starting to come. So we're at that place to watch the Lord do this. I'll tell you a story. You know, you, you mentioned about sowing and praying. Actually, those are two great things. I mean, I could easily fit into that myself. And so when we started this a year and a half ago, you know, it was just once a month for a couple of days. And then we've moved to two weeks out of every month, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. When we have our own building, It'll be twice a day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, probably three weeks out of the month. And um, so anyhow, we were struggling with getting people to come because a healing center in Colorado is kind of closely related to maybe uh, crystals and um, seriously, people think about that and wow. new age and all that. You know, there's a diff many different areas in the, in the mountain areas where it's very new age. Uh, so I know it's difficult for people to think of coming to a what? A healing center? So uh, Aaron and I were just, we put out advertisements, and the advertisements we put out have only pretty much gotten some bad reviews, you know? Like this guy's scamming you. Did you get any Google to... reviews? Did oh, you get, what's that? Did you have any Google reviews? No, I haven't had a Google, but, you know, I'm sure they're coming. And, um, you know, it makes me want to respond to all of them, but Aaron, Aaron won't let me, you know? So... Because they'll say things like, you know, he's going to take all your money. And we don't even ask for money. Like, we're just doing this to bless the people. There's no offering plates. There's no money. There's no, no mention of giving or receiving. People will come, how do I give? And a lot of times I'll just say, well, just go to the website if you'd like to give. And then sometimes people say, no, I want to give something right now, you know. And so, you know, we'll say, well, if you do, I mean, that's fine. You can. But, um, you know, we just, we, interesting how people are perceiving this. And so, real quick, I'll just share this. So, uh, because of Mark Hankins' ministry on being generous, the message of generosity, it really got into our hearts. So, we just decided, you know, because God has blessed us, we've been traveling more from COVID than we have in our entire ministry, which is really like the opposite of so many people I know. Our schedule is just so booked and slammed, even still. I was just commenting to Aaron while those while those uh, Sundays were up for April. In fact, the ninth was missing, but I'm just looking at everyone thinking, we are gone for every single one of them. I mean, and, uh, and then when you get home, you jump right into the healing center, and then we've got three videos a week. We have a YouTube 
uh, channel called Adventures in Grace that's all about what Pastor Laura was talking about, about just getting to know God more. And then we do an old prayer school live on Monday. Leanne and I came back. That's, you know, where your pastor was a part of prayer school back in the day when I was ministering at the Kenneth Hagin Ministries. And I was over prayer school and healing school. And Leanne sows me back then. Uh, she was helping me. And then, of course, when I left, she took it over. But we kind of came back on the Internet. And we've got, you know, a couple thousand people that will just watch and get in there and pray. And, and it's just wonderful to hook up in prayer in the day we're living. There's so much stirring. So just real quickly, I'll just share this and then turn it back over to Pastor Darren. But, um, you know, we, our vision for Colorado in this healing center, as I mentioned, twice a day, We'll have individuals who want to train about 50 people that are in that are very astute in prayer and can release the presence of God. And then they'll be in between the services. They'll be there to just take people off the street and minister to them. And God's made a way for us when we finally have our own building to actually um, erect a uh, laboratory that will minister to the community as a place for blood work, MRIs, x-rays, ultrasounds. But we're going to attach the laboratory to the healing center. And we're going we're gonna to validate all the healings. So there'll be doctor val validation. And when we put things up on the internet to say this happened, this happened, this happened, it'll all be by what the doctors are approving. This, um, it's really a cool idea. This laboratory is, will be connected down into Florida where there'll be, uh, no, actually Atlanta, Georgia, where there'll be 10 doctors that will be on staff for us that will take all of our findings and uh, the x-rays and blood work, and then they'll send back their reports. Lord. So it's going to be really fun. In the day we're living, you know that the world, if you said, well, 15 people were healed, they'd say, yeah, all right. Even, hopefully I'm not saying this to anyone here, but even the Christians will say, yeah, right. Because think of it, and, and I'm not giving you a hard time. Thank God for good doctors. We found in the last couple of years that not all of them necessarily may be as good as some of the others, right? But really and truly in the Christian world today, probably 9.5 out of 10, if something's wrong, we'll always go to the doctor. In fact, I had someone say to me recently, well, I've done everything that I can finally do. All the doctors can't help me. I guess I'm just going to have to believe God. And I said to them, that's really too bad. I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> sorry, you have to depend on God. Yeah. You know, and so there needs to be a change even for believers. Now, to preach that change to people, you'll only get just a few people that will change. But if you demonstrate that to the body of Christ, you'll get the majority that will say, if that's what Jesus is doing in this day and I can count on him like that, then I won't go to the doctor. I'm letting God heal me. Amen. And so we have to bring back healing and faith to the people through a demonstration that will satisfy oh, their heart oh to take a step that they're not going to take right now because they're not sure it's going to work. Go ahead. So powerful. And Is this mine? No, you got one down there, though. Okay, just throw it. Oh, let's see. You got it, bro. Whoa, I like how he slammed it down like, boy, I got that. That's because it was a good throw. Uh, um, Jim, you kind of kind of stirred me to kind of go into some of the things that the Lord put on my heart. And the word, I, I didn't really, I, I, this is the first time you and I have ever sat down. I was fine just turning you loose because you're obviously more than capable to do whatever it is that you do in ministry. Uh, but I just kind of felt like impressed to do this this morning. And I believe there'll be some things that'll happen in the next uh, few minutes. But the word that was stirred to me was, <clears throat> excuse me, activation. And you're saying that it's a demonstration or, <clears throat> you know, not just preaching about it, talking about it, saying, you know, Jesus is a healer, saying miracle signs and wonders. I've heard that ever since I came into a church like Melody. Oh, there's coming a day where God's spirit's going to be poured out and miracle signs and wonders. And yet we see year after year, you know, decade after decade, people passing away with sickness, uh, you know, at believers not really operating in seeing those things, uh, even though, you know, it, it's given to us in the scripture to see. 
Um, but I was thinking about you, and I remember you sharing that you grew up, I don't know if it was Southern Baptist or what kind of Baptist. Just independent. Just independent Baptist. You were born again <laughs> at a young age, correct? And then you you remained that. At what point did you transition into more of a experiencing, you know, God's power or things around healing or miracles, et cetera? Like, what happened? Was there like a, a moment or was it a season where you kind of stepped into some things? You know, after uh, I went to Wheaton College uh, in Wheaton, Illinois, for my um, undergrad uh, degree, and that was a place that was very, real heavily, heavily um, influenced with evangelicalism, you know, and so very much like my Baptist uh, background. Wonderful people, you know. I, when you talk about maybe different denominations, I, I, I guarantee you one thing. People that are saved, I found this to be true all over the world. They're just wonderful, loving people, okay? So, you know, if I say Baptists, it, just because maybe they don't believe in healing like we do doesn't mean they're, they don't have tremendous and wonderful hearts. But, uh, yeah, so Wheaton College, it was very much like my Baptist background where we don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. We don't believe in speaking other tongues. We don't believe in divine healing, but we believe that God can. We're just not sure if he will, okay, that kind of a background. And during that time, I had gotten sick, you know, in my body and um, was struggling. I couldn't play. I went there for sports, for football, and ended up after the first year. After the second year, I couldn't even play anymore. Um, had some surgery in my body. Just was really struggling. And, of course, praying the prayers, Lord, if it be thy will, you know. And um, so all of that made me more open to... Uh, well, all my life, I have been more open to something other than what's just been presented. So that's been kind of marked on me. So if I was in an environment and everybody was doing something my whole entire life, I would figure out a better way to do what was being done. <clears throat> but the harsh part was then I'd have to go against everybody else. And so that was even since I've been a kid. And so when the same thing happened, when I started having difficulty, then immediately I began to look at what was being preached and had to go sit down with my pastor, you know, and, and say some things to him. And he says, so how long have you been thinking like this? <laughs> you know, and I said, well, I'm not trying to think like this. It's just my heart is open to maybe there's more. And why wouldn't we discover more? Why would we be afraid of more? So that even happened way back then. And then one step after the other, I started traveling with different ministry groups. And then as I did, I became involved with other people that thought differently and some people that were filled with the Holy Ghost. And so now you begin to step into some wonderful truths. I remember my first book that was so amazing was um, uh, What Happened from the Cross to the Throne by E.W. Kenyon. And I just hung on every word like, oh my goodness, this is so amazing because it was anointed and the presence of God was on it. And so one step after another, then I began to open up my heart, got filled with the Holy Ghost, traveled in different groups. The Spirit of God spoke to me about coming to Ramah, then came to Ramah. And within, before the two years was over, I was traveling with Brother Hagen in the Ramah Singers and Band. And so that was just a progression of getting me to where um, I was. And, you know, traveling with Brother Hagen, everything was new. Nothing was something I'd seen before. I know I tell this to just have a funny moment, but, you know, they, you know when I got into the group, I, I used to actually be really strong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work out again. But anyhow, um, and so they put me in charge of making sure I didn't drop the prophet. Well, back then, you know, I came from a Baptist, Baptist background. All we had were pastors, evangelists, and missionaries. So I said, you know, I thought this was a nonprofit organization, <laughs> you know, and... Uh, they said, no, actually, actually you know, it's, it's Brother Hagen. He's a prophet. And I said, oh, my gosh, you have those, you know. So it's like, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anything. So this is like dating me, but it was all new. So all the experiences were new. When Brother Hagen had me to minister in a service, it was all new for me. When I went to prayer and healing school, these guys that came there thought we were really good at what we did. We just didn't tell them. That was like a new experience for us, you know. That was a first and so all of this was just a tremendous experience of learning. But here's the thing, activation. What made the difference in activation? Very simply, it was compassion for the people. Brother Hagen said this years ago, if you'll have compassion for the people, the Holy Ghost will show you what to do. And that's what happened in healing school. We saw so many people die at first, 
that we had such compassion for the people that God began to show me what to do. Now, what I did and the things that followed and what I learned, you know, it kind of went against many of other people or teachers that were even at the ministry. But God was showing us on purpose to help the people. And so then activation, if you will, became like the main word of everything we did in prayer and healing school, which was what would a prayer school be if you didn't have an answer prayer? What would a healing school be if no one got healed? So basically, I mean, just so in case we're all, I want us all to be on the same page, activation is actually seeing what we're talking about in operation. Yeah, it's using it's, your uh, faith to, to experience the power of God. I, th I thought of a couple verses this morning, uh, you know, James 1.22, don't be hearers of the word only, but be doers. Uh, James 2, and I think 2 several times or a couple times, says faith without works is dead. Um, and then I thought of this, where I don't know if you guys have that verse. Uh, I never had time to find it, but where Jesus sent out the 70. Do you have that? Yeah, that's over in what Luke chapter, is it 10? Uh, Luke 9 probably is the 12. Jesus sent the 12 out. Luke 10 would be... Well, that's Luke 10, 19. Anyway, it says... They'll put it up eventually, but it's my... I'm sorry, guys. I didn't get that to you ahead of time. But it says he sent out the 70. He gave them, what, power or authority right. or power to basically deal with demonic influences, sickness, disease. He said raise the dead. Did right. He? Cleanse the leper, raise the dead, heal the sick, yeah. So basically, Jesus took that group of 70... Because I, I, in my religious experience, I thought everybody, and rightfully so, we say Jesus. Jesus did it. Jesus did it. I, it's just a mystery to me that we skip right over that, that Jesus empowered 70 individuals before his death, burial, and resurrection, gave them power, authority, whatever the, the word is in the scripture is, and then they went out, and then they came back, it says, they returned with joy because they said the, the devils are subject to us because of what you've given us. So he empowered them. There was an, uh, an immediate activation of sorts of th these guys went out. They had no training. They were not born again. They didn't have right. whatever. They went out and had miracles. They had signs and wonders and, right. and different things. And I'm thinking, we're born again, filled with the Spirit of God, and we are struggling to step into a results-based <laughs> version of christianity which is the only real version right, right? right and i'm just i'm like how does this what are we missing here and you do this you work with and you said it brother hagan activated you i mean he yep. put you in a place where you had to begin to folks here's the bottom line we have been sermonized to death we have more sermons than we know what to do with we've been to more bible studies than we can count we've had more times in church than we know what to do with but at the end of the day, if we can't take God's word and get it to work for us, then I have a problem with that. And that's what I want to see, you know, even in the next few minutes today, there to be a greater degree of an activation right. in us actually stepping into, if it says lay hands on the sick and they will be healed, then we should be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. So uh, a couple things I'll say. You started out with James 1.22, be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. So one of the things that tells us is the end of all things must not be the Bible. Be a doer, not a hearer only. Because if all ended in just the Bible itself, it would say, just keep on hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So the fact that you're going to step beyond what you've heard and do something shows you that the end of all things is not just the scriptures. So the scriptures have a, have a purpose to help you to experience him. But the scriptures are not him, even though they are his words. When you get to heaven, you won't see a a caricature of a book with a smiley face on it saying, hi, I'm God, right? Got really quiet in here. But remember, when God breathed Adam into his body and he came alive, he wasn't looking at a book. He was looking, help me. Was he looking at God? Does anybody agree with that? 
Okay, then that means that's plan A. So why did, why was it necessary to compile people's stories and put them into the scriptures? Well, because people lost plan A. And they would have lost every idea completely that there even was a God because they already in three chapters exalted man to the point where they were going to build a, a, a structure to the sky and God had to confuse their language. Right? Look at what man's doing today. It's the exaltation of man, right? Mankind. And man will do that. So what did God have to do? Well, he wrote people's stories in a book and then wrote the ultimate story through those stories, which was weaving that blood covenant of the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth to show us that there was a redemption that was coming from mankind. And everyone's story contributes to the, the purpose of piquing your curiosity as to say, if Paul could have that relationship, if Abraham could have that relationship, if these guys that were 70 could have that, those results and they weren't even born again, then hello, am I chopped liver? Why, why not me? And see, then it's that kind of uh, understanding that causes someone to say, God, I believe you're out there. That's what Enoch did. So the Bible is to help propel you towards an experience with a person, and that person, every single day that you walk with, will produce testimonies. And let me share one other thing real quickly before I give you the 12 and the 70 here in Luke chapter 9 and chapter 10 that Pastor Darren talked about. I've been saved for 57 years. I've been married for 31 years. Sadly, I have more experiences with my wife in 31 years than I do with God in 57 the reason why I have more experiences with my wife is I didn't marry a love letter. I married a person. So when I'm with her every day, even though some days the experiences vary from a, a lot of contact to maybe not as much contact, we have testimony after testimony. We could, we could stand here and tell you, even though they'd be small little things, but remember, if the, if the little foxes spoil the vine, Solomon Song of Solomon 2.15, then it's the little tiny connections to the individual that repairs the vine. So we could tell you what we said to each other this morning, whether we touched each other or not, how we interacted with each other this morning. And we would have 20, 50, 70 stories already by time here it is 11.09 because we're tangible to each other and we're with each other. But when I grew up, I wasn't taught that about God. I was taught about a person, so I had a relationship with a concept. I didn't have a relationship with a real person. And even though, even as a Baptist little boy, I had all kinds of experiences with God, no one told me they were with God. So there were times I thought to myself, man, I'm pretty smart. I asked myself a question, and I got myself an answer. But it wasn't me, it was him. But I didn't know it was him because I wasn't told that. So here, so many years of my life went by just believing in a God I don't get a chance to really meet, and I never really see the end result of him working in my life. I mean, we, we know he's there. I know he's there. Praise the Lord. I'm so comforted that he's there, but I don't see, like, change in circumstances, in difficulties, in the chaos of life and trouble, but I know he's there. But then all of a sudden, I began to understand more about him being there and that I could make a connection with him every single day. And now I've begun to have experience after experience after experience with God. Now it's starting to be like my experiences I have with my wife. So someone would say, Brother Jim, you've been saved 57 years. You've never really strayed from the Lord. That's right. Oh, what a wonderful testimony. Well, maybe, maybe not. I mean, on one hand, you'd say, well, you, you've at least stayed true to the Lord. The other hand is... You'd say, it, maybe it's not such a great testimony because you don't have many testimonies of all the time that you've actually been with him. Now, real quickly, Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together, gave them power and authority over demons to cure disease. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Notice what he said. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and then heal the sick. What was the pattern for the 12? Preach first then heal. All right, now over here in Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also sent them two by two before his face into every town and place 
where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great. Verse 3, go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs. Verse 4, carry neither money bag, knapsack, or sandals. I love this in the Message Bible. It says, don't try to get all kinds of equipment. You are the equipment. Wow, that's awesome. And this is what it says here. It says, um, and heal the sick there, and then say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. And that's verse 9. Isn't it interesting? To the 70, he reversed the order. To the 12, he said, preach, then heal. To the 70, he said, heal, then preach. You say, how come? Well, because the 12 were high profile. The 70, we don't even know who they are today. And guess what? Either did the people. So guess what Jesus said? To the 12, what do you mean they're high profile? Well, remember when Jesus was taken by the Sanhedrin and by the soldiers, and Peter was warming himself next to that little slave, she said, well, you're one of the ones that with yeah. him. How come she knew him? Because they saw the 12 everywhere Jesus went. Like when, they, when they, Jesus made the small little boy's lunch into a big, huge you know, smorgasbord, it was the 12 that were passing out all the food and gathering up the 12 baskets full. So the people saw them. It's like me traveling with Brother Hagen and 10,000 people every night at, heal, at, at camp meeting. And people would come up to me and say, hey, Brother Jim, and I'm, uh, hi. I don't know them, but they would know me. Okay, that means, in other words, if I were to get up in front of those people who knew that I traveled with Brother Hagen, they wouldn't say initially, sit down, boy, who are you? They'd say, that's one of Brother Hagen's boys right there. So they would listen to me. But the 70, they don't know who they are. So what did Jesus say? Heal them first. Once you get them healed, they'll listen to anything you got to say. Isn't that amazing? Talking about activation. Glory so is it possible? God. Is it possible before you actually preach a message huh. that you are the message? That you are the equipment? And that you could stand right up and begin to minister healing right out of your belly flows rivers of living water. And you could activate that and someone get healed? Before you preach to them that Jesus is Lord, wow, that's pretty awesome. I'm, I'm, uh, oh, glory to God. Come on up, Travis. I, uh, I want to leave a few minutes for Jim to minister to some uh, today, but the answer you gave the answer, it's him. It's not our ministry training. It's not our fancy, eloquent sermons. It's not that never worked in healing school for three months. When I was there preaching everybody else's sermon, and these are like the big dogs that were there. Like, and when I say that, I don't say that negatively. I mean, we're talking about teachers that today are some of the VIP teachers in the land. And their, uh, their teaching gift is amazing. And I'm preaching their stuff, and people are dying. I don't know why people were okay with that. Because once healing school changed, and I asked God to fix me, I said, Lord, it's not the people. They're sheep. Sheep need shepherds to take them to the right streams and to the right pastures. So for me to look at, look at you and say, if you just had faith, you could get your healing. How insensitive that is if I don't produce a demonstration that would give you the right to believe. And I said, Lord, it's not you. It's got to be me. And then I got on my face and began to weep. And I said, If you can change me, we can change healing school. And that was a really good prayer, everybody. Because when you pray through humility, God's grace will always come. And he began to show me things. But the things he showed me were different than other people were preaching. So now I'm on a journey to rub everybody's hair the, you know, against the grain. And it's like, oh, God. And I found something out. I found out my personality. Maybe it was the New Yorker in me. It was meant to go across the grain. Like the harder people came at me, the better I was. The more anointing came on me to preach something that was more real than something that was just good. But people went home and they died. I remember a little boy, 11 years old, he grabbed my hand and said, Jim Hockaday, thank you so much for what you've done for me. And then one late week later, I heard he went home to be with the Lord. So I guess I didn't do much. And I turned that over to the Lord, and he began to share things with me. 
and showed me some things that were different. And the day I walked into afternoon healing school and began to preach it, people's mouths fell open because I stopped saying things like, we're going to believe together and you're going to be healed. That never works, Darren. I said, you ready to get out of the chair? Are you ready to be well today? The power's coming on you and you're going to be set free. And people are like, what kind of, what kind of word is this? I love the message Bible about Jesus when he cast out the demons in Mark chapter 2. And it said, finally, somebody that does what they say. See, they marveled at what such words had such authority. Well, when you become absolute with what you know God will do, all of a sudden it changes the way you say things. You don't say things like, well, you know, we're going to try. We're going to do our best. But we're going to believe with you. That's not what you would say if you were running a restaurant. We're going to do our best to get out, you know, this dish on time. No, you'd say, hey, are you ready for an amazing meal tonight? Wouldn't you? Because if you can't say that and you're running a restaurant, you need to go do something else. Right? You'd be more absolute. Like if you were making cupcakes, like the dear lady that makes cupcakes, and we have some in our room, you'd say, are you ready to have cupcakes that are going to change your life? <laughs> right? You wouldn't say, I'm going to try to make some cupcakes. I think you might like them. I sure hope you do. No, no, there's nothing in that that seems to indicate you actually believe in what you do. And everything changed in healing school. The power fell and people started getting healed. And even the usher looked at me and he said, I've seen more happen today than I have in the last six years put together. And when I looked at him, I said, are you kidding? He said, I could count on one hand how many times I've seen somebody be healed in the last six years. Folks, that began a new era in healing school. And it had nothing to do with what I was doing. It was what the Lord wanted to do. I'm telling you, he wants to do things even in this room. And whether you know it or not, there's people that are being healed. Why? Because we bring the healing. We are a house where God lives. We're in, we're in Texas, and we're up on a really high floor in a hotel. And Erin looks out as she opened up. She goes, oh, there's one of my favorite stores. And I'm looking out there thinking, I wonder what that is. I wonder what that store is. I'm wondering what it is. I can't see anything that would look like her favorite store and I say what what's one of your favorite stores she said right there i said the container store she said i love the container store i'm like oh, there's just containers like all different sizes and shapes and colors and she says yes it's wonderful will you go with me and i'm like no no i don't want to go in that store and yes i did go with her and that's all that's there <laughs> Smart boy. And she loves those containers because she can put all her things in there and so nice and neat and perfect. And we are a container and God lives in us. And he just wants somebody to turn them loose. See, someone's hip, the right hip, is being healed right now in this room. And where you used to waddle like a duck, you can actually walk like a human. And someone under the arm, I don't know what it is, armpit area under the arm, there's been some type of problem. Maybe it's even in the skin. God's healing you right now. And there's someone, as far as even your mouth is concerned, down into your throat, God's healing you right now. Infection is leaving. There's someone in this room, you've been so full of fear for the last two or three years because of all this nonsense that's been going on with COVID and all this ridiculousness that's been going on with the mainstream media that's been lying through their teeth to the American people. But you still nonetheless find yourself with panic attacks. Fear comes on you. And I'm telling you this morning, we will touch you and instantly that fear will leave you. And you'll walk out of this place with a peace that surpasses understanding, guarding your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And you'll find yourself saying, I will never let this peace go from my life. Because when you have God's peace, it's the most wonderful. It's so tranquil. It's better than even, even though I love sitting on a beach, looking at a palm tree and in an ocean, but it's even better than that. It's like you can't be moved because God's with you. Always oh, starting to do some things in the area of someone's cranium in your head. You've had, you've had different type of headaches and different type of experiences. Somebody's even had pain in your eyes. Even this morning, God's setting you free and your vision will return. 
God's touching you right here, right now. There's so many people in this room where there's aches and pains. Do not buy into the idea that you are of a certain age, and because of that age, you just have to have these aches and pains. They are not of the Lord. And Jesus spilled his blood and shed his blood that you would be free from all pain. And God's setting you free from pain, arthritis going, pain in the joints, discomfort in your body, organs producing pain inside. God's setting people free. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Jesus. Sing it with me. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Darren, something happens happening in the room. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you sense right now any of the things that we've just mentioned, if you sense that something like that is happening in your body, would you come down to the front? Aaron and I are going to minister to you, and we're going to release this life into you that's just so abundant. Do you know the life of God is so absolute that a cancer can't live in the life of God. There's something of absolute cold. You can actually Google it if you want to. Absolute cold. That's where the temperature, it's not 32 degrees below zero. It's like hundreds of degrees below zero where there's absolutely not an ounce of heat in that environment. It can't live. The moment heat would enter into absolute cold, instantly it would become frozen. This is a thing, absolute cold. Well, the life of Jesus Christ that lives in all of us is just exactly like that. It's so absolute and it's so pure that one sickness, disease, germ, bacteria, or virus that touches it instantly dies. It can't live in that environment. And that's what's living in you. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly you are filled with this kind of life. It will rejuvenate cells within you. It will even make you young, but it will kill every sickness and every disease. Every pain will leave in this presence. People are being touched even as we speak. Come on up to the front. We'll minister. Pastor Darren, don't go anywhere. We need to talk even a little bit more, but we're going to minister just for a few moments here. Come on up here, Aaron. Hallelujah. Just stretch out over the front of the auditorium. Come on. Don't bunch up here. Get back over here. Praise the Lord. What did you all come for? What did you need? You all stretch your hands out this way. Three back surgeries. Are you ready? You ready to bend and be fit? Amen. Well, it just comes to you and it comes on you. Well, amen. Amen. I'm not going to pray for you. We just release that glory into you. And as of right now, Jesus says that you can bend without pain. Jesus says that your heart is free to live again. Amen. And strength returns and your health is strong. Amen. Begin to experience that right now. Sir, begin to move and turn and begin to see what the Lord has done. Amen. Turn and move. Praise the Lord. Walk around and see what the Lord's done because he just did something to your body. Praise the Lord. What about you? He's fine. He's going to be doing cartwheels in just a moment. What about you? You had what? Breast cancer. Are you ready for that to die? Put your hands on your own self. My wife's going to put her hand. In the name, I command that to come out of your body. It cannot stay any longer in this woman. Freedom today in Jesus name Jesus what about you sir what's that eyes in your back in the name of the Lord I command you to see and your back to be healed and well in Jesus name now begin to bend 
and begin to move and begin to see that you're not the same as you were just a few moments ago. Go ahead, and then as you do that, walk around and begin to see. What about you, sir? You lost what? you right now in the name of Jesus Christ I command grief take your hand off of this man leave him alone today the peace and the joy of the Lord and God's strength comes to your heart and you'll find something you haven't had in years in the name of the Lord be free today and experience that love amen amen yeah Yeah, you ready for that to go? In the name, I command you to be healed today. And that will leave your body quicker than it ever came. Walk around the room and check yourself. Walk around the room and check yourself. It's already been getting hot. Praise the Lord. You watch. You watch and see. Go check yourself and see. What about you, brother? Where do I start? Yeah, just a bunch of things. Pain in the back, pain in the chest. Yeah. Yeah, you ready for that to go? Yeah, yeah it'll just it'll just leave you right now. In the, that's it. In fact, it just did, brother. It just did. Check yourself and see. Bend over. Bend over. Get your healing. Isn't that pretty awesome? Amen. And if he can do that that quickly, the rest of it just disappears too. I saw you coming up. I knew you'd be well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dear one, what about you? What do you need? We're not playing with this. What we put into you will drive that out. You know that salt water and fresh water can't come out of the same tap. So now Jesus sets free. And that comes out of your body. So it's not what you believe. It's what you experience and see today that's real. What about you? Are you ready for that heart to be well? Yes. I'll tell you what, put your hands up and receive this right now. Jesus is pouring out into your heart strength. In fact, there's angels here right now moving and manifesting in your body, healing to this heart in Jesus' name. Amen. If I were you, I'd run around this room and just make the devil mad. Go ahead right now. You won't be hurt. You won't die. You're healed and healthy. Run around this room. What about you? You ready to get healed? <laughs> Put your hands on your body. Go ahead, Aaron. Fire a God. Touch this woman. Pentecostal woman, be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything about your body will start to work today like it hasn't in years. Check yourself, you'll see. Hallelujah. Are you ready to get healed right now? Take this. I know that I know that you, that's it. Hey, glory, 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 glory. Take some more of that. Amen. That's just the presence of the Lord. Amen. You ready, Jeannie, to get healed? Just take, oh, fire comes on you in the name of Jesus. What about you? You ready for that to leave you? I'm going to slap you in the chest. In the name of Jesus, I command that diabetes. Come out of that body. Turn him loose. Step right up here. What about you? Yeah, well, we're going to have a change. Now put your hand in my hand. Put your hand in her hand. In the name of the Lord, there's feeling going into your feet right now. Pick them up. And put them down walk with me right in place and start to feel it's happening right now it's the coolest thing in the world it is happening isn't it <laughs> she said I can feel my feet again yeah it's happening right now come on now jump up a little bit amen oh glory 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 
If he can do that, then he's also healed you of diabetes. Now take off, dear lady. Walk around this room. You're free of neuropathy, and you're free of diabetes. Look at her go. Amen. What about you? Your eyes. In the name of the Lord, I command. That's it right there, brother. Amen. I command these eyes to see. Take those glasses off. Walk around. Amen. What about her? to leave this body she'll eat what she wants she'll breathe as deep as she wants and no allergen will touch her body in Jesus name we pronounce you clean and whole amen amen watch watch it'll happen right there right now what about you headaches when's headaches gonna leave Are they gonna leave today Amen. Then just stick your forehead right up there at me. And in the name of Jesus, I command those headaches to come out of your body and they'll not come back. In fact, if it left you and it just did, then you can't have something if the source is gone. You're fixing to have some pretty cool experiences from this moment on. Can you feel that? That's pretty awesome. What did the Lord just do? He just set you free. And you even felt it. That's how powerful that is. God, listen closely, God is a tangible God. I'll say it again, he's a tangible God. He's a real person. You're not going to get to heaven and someone says, there he is. Where, where? And you can't see him or he's a wisp of wind. He's a real person. God sits on the throne and he's going to get off the throne and you'll see a real person walk up to you. And that's the same real person that wants to walk with you and talk with you. Remember the old song, and he walks with me, and he talks with me. God's real. We touch these people just like this woman felt. You'll feel the presence of God, and it's real. You don't have to feel it to get healed. <clears throat> you believe it, but he's real. How are you doing over there? What about you? Somebody's throat. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. When we talked about the throat, he instantly felt something. <coughs> Pastor dear, could you get me my water? Just throw it, bro. Don't take the cap off, you know. Thank you, sir. Are you ready to get healed? Let her put her hand right there at the base of your throat. Wow. I know it's happening already. I can feel it coming out of me, but it's actually coming out of her. <laughs> Woo. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That'll be the end of it. In fact, your immune system from, listen, listen closely, your immune system from this day has just bumped up so many degrees in its strength and its health that you won't even get sick. You'll forget about the last time that you were because you'll have so many days and months and weeks without even feeling a sickness, without even feeling a pain. It'll be called divine health. And that comes to you right now in Jesus. Take that right there. What about you, sir? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Did you see that lady right back there? Ma'am, you're standing up. How are those feet doing? Don't they feel wonderful? She had neuropathy, and God healed them right now. This is gonna, this is gonna go into you, and and I don't know why, but over the next couple of days of us being here, you're gonna see it just begin to increase. You're healing, but you're gonna be able to tell something right here, right now. But it'll just begin to slowly increase and increase and increase. If that's okay with you, it sure beats having it the rest of your life. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I release you from this thing, and I'm calling it a thing, and I command it to come off of your body, to untangle itself from your life, and I speak God's blessing upon your life, and I'm also going to say this, there's nothing that you've done 
to have warranted this thing to come to your life. It's nothing but an attack, and it leaves you now in Jesus' name. And his life and his mercy begins to heal and set you free in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. What about you, ma'am? Yeah, well, put your hand in my hand. Put your hand in her hand. This is getting ready to leave. Amen. God knows everything that you've had. The only time you feel no pain is when you're dancing for God. Well, I command you not to dance for God for at least a good day so that you can tell that you don't have to hurt when you're not dancing for God. See, you thought I was going to tell you forever not to dance. No. But if when you dance, you don't feel it, now I want you to stop dancing for 24 hours so you can tell that you've been completely healed. And the burning, where is it gone? Notice your feet move them around. Isn't that like the coolest thing? God's healing you right now and you're not even dancing. <laughs> Who takes some more of that? Jesus, wonderful name. <laughs> How about you? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. So there's things that the Lord says concerning the heart, that there's healing that comes to the heart. So take this. Right. Are you filled with the Holy Ghost, young man? What's that? Do you pray in other tongues? What's that? Well, today, let's get refilled, okay? Lift up your hands, and let's begin to pray together. In the name of Jesus, I thank God for the Holy Ghost to come upon you. That's it, right there. Now begin to speak. You can't speak if you don't open your mouth, young man. There you go. Just begin to speak out what comes to your heart because the Holy Ghost is on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You pray in other tongues, and you worship the Lord, and the Lord will strengthen your heart. Amen. <coughs> yes, ma'am, what about you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's going to lay her hands on you. God's going to heal you. In the wonderful name of Jesus, <clears throat> take that healing right now. Take this healing. No, that's it, right there. I could tell it went right into you, right then. And that's going to be the change that you're looking for in Jesus' wonderful name. <coughs> Get some more of that water, yeah. What do you need, sir? Amen. Amen. Right. Right. Well, you know, the cool thing is he'll strengthen your heart right now so you can do some things about the other. Just even walking and doing exercise. But he'll strengthen your heart right now. And that power come on you right. Jesus, take that, brother, right there. It's like a download of God's presence in your body. It just give you strength that you haven't had. <coughs> and healing to remove things that have been there that shouldn't be there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Did you just sneak up without me knowing? Or were you here? <laughs> Sorry, I missed you. What'd you need? Oh, you're helping. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Come on, everybody. It's 1140. I grew up Baptist, and they're not out yet for 20 minutes. They were very punctual. Right at 12 o'clock. 
Let me ask you a question. Who in here from what we've been sharing this morning, you're just dying to ask a question? Is there someone here? Anybody that has a question about some of the things that we're doing and talking about? God's really wanting to prepare the body of Christ for the work of the Lord in this last day. Amen? We've, we've watched a really grand time, so to speak, of ministers taking the stage in a real big, huge way, you know, grand entrances and things. And to me, some of that is possibly okay. I don't know. I'm not going to judge. But things are changing where God's moving upon the body and ministers like your pastor and pastors and like myself, we'd be glad just to really get out of the way. So we're trying the best we can to empower you because you're going to know people and meet people that we'll never meet. And we want you capable of ministering in a way that'll set them free. Things are changing. Sir, right here in the blue shirt, did you have a question? You're just worshiping God. Okay. Yes, ma'am. says that the outward man is perishing, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. And I'm one of those people who's getting older, and I struggle with if it isn't just natural for that to happen. Yeah, well, again, remember Adam and Eve in the garden. Uh, they didn't have any pain. They didn't have any affliction. God didn't make any of that, remember? But the moment that they sinned and came out of the garden, everything began to change. Isn't that right? One of the things that changed was God was no longer uh, taking care of their meals, was no longer taking care of their home or their clothing. Remember? So when they came out of the garden, they had to immediately fend for themselves and learn how to provide food, shelter, clothing. And in the process of them coming out of the garden in a sin nature, everything else began to change, which is there was a day when they had their first pain. Wouldn't there be? Like maybe they, they nicked their knee on a, on a rock or something, and then all of a sudden they said, ow. And, and I bet if it was Eve that said that, Adam probably said, why'd you say that? Well, because it hurt. And he said, what has hurt me? Because he didn't know. Remember, they're coming from a perfect environment. And so Adam then, he has his first day where he hits himself and he goes, ow. And she said, see, I told you, did it hurt? Yes, it hurts. And all of a sudden, something that never was supposed to be has been embellished over all these years until we constantly as parents teach our children things so they don't have to hurt because we believe in it so much. We have all kinds of things in our medicine cabinet to, to make sure that if we do hurt, we can take something so that it doesn't hurt as bad. Now think about this. Is it possible we bought into the idea that when you turn a certain age, you can't read your Bible anymore? Huh? And maybe at a certain age, you know, you get up and you go, oh my gosh, I'm sore. And then all you need is one of your kids to say, Dad, it's because you're old. And then you think, yeah, that's right, it's because I'm old. But remember, all of this is a worldly concept that came from sin. We've been redeemed from sin. You don't have to accept that. Don't buy into that idea. I don't care how old you are. Why not live the rest of your life without pain? Why not live the rest of your life being able to see and feel really good about yourself and like the old patriarchs did that weren't even born again they died without pain and sickness and they curled their legs up blessed their family and said okay i'm going why can't we the sons and daughters of god at least have that existence so to your question about getting older don't buy into that there's presence there's power there's ability you know first thessalonians chapter 5 it says that our whole spirit soul and body be what preserved blameless preserved blameless so preserved comes from preservative so there's something that god gives us that will preserve you spirit soul and body you don't have to get old and lose your mind there's a preservative there 
You're not going to lose your spiritual condition in Christ. There's a preservative there. And your body is the same. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will quicken your body so your body can be healthy and strong as you get old. I'm not planning. I know I have to work out because there's things that happen in ministry right now. We're so busy. <clears throat> there's so much of the time that I'm sitting and studying or whatnot or on planes. But I don't want to be able to not run with my grandchildren. <clears throat> play some football with my my uh, um, my kids or my uh, son-in-laws. Why do I have to be so slow? I'm not. I'm still fast. And I want to still be agile when I'm 70, when I'm 80. So let's not buy into that. We don't have to. Amen?